anticipated all sports final team for high school football. That's right. After looking back through the highlights, looking at state, at, uh, at tapes, and talking to several area coaches, Neil and I have chosen the players who we think were the best in 1991, and we'll start with the defense. To build a great defense, you have to start off with a solid front line. And nose guard Gary Bohannon out of Springdale was just about as solid as they come. The three-year starter was named the state quad a lineman of the year and is considered to be one of the top recruits in the state. Bohannon will be flanked by Northside's Joe Lombard on one side. Lumber was voted to the Arkansas Super Prep squad, accounting for 68 tackles and 27 assists on the season. On the other side of Bohannon is Brandon Green of Siloam Springs. Now, Green led the Panthers in tackles, including six sacks. The 6'2", 230-pound all-conference selection also had an interception when she returned 55 yards for a touchdown. The sports final all-star linebackers will be led by Travis Biggs of Fort Smith Northside. Biggs led the Grizzlies with 82 tackles, 29 assists, two interceptions, and a pair of fumble recoveries. Biggs also returned a punt for a touchdown, and he is likely an all-stater. John Lampro of Van Buren will join Biggs in the linebacking core. Lambro led the pointers in tackles in their first year in the brutal Quad A West Conference. Opposing coaches say Lampro can dominate the middle. Alma's Chad Nuremberg is the third linebacker on the sports final all-star team. The 6'1", 210-pounder was the leading tackler for the Airedales. He was also named to the 3A West all-conference team. Poto's Mike Odom rounds out the linebackers. Odom's aggressiveness earned him Oklahoma's Area Defensive Player of the Year honors. Derek Arter of Southside has landed a spot in the defensive backfield. While gaining the most attention as a running back, Arter was instrumental in the Rebs' title run, accounting for 62 tackles, two fumble recoveries, and a pair of interceptions. Another player known primarily for his offense made the starting lineup as a D-back. The Roland Rangers' Albert Castleberry wrapped up a fantastic career in Roland this season. At 5'11", 185 pounds, Castleberry has good size and was an MVP-type player for the Rangers. Defensive back number three is Brian Hurt of Greenwood. Now, Hurt played a variety of positions for the Bulldogs this season, playing D-back, tailback, wide receiver, and he even took a few snaps at quarterback. Hurt used his quickness to help lead Greenwood to its first playoff berth since 1982. And now it's time for the sports final defensive player of the year. That honor goes this year to D-back Anthony Eubanks of Spyro. As with several players, Eubanks excelled on the offensive side of the ball with 736 yards in catches including 12 for touchdowns. But it's on defense where the 6'3", 170-pound junior stood out for the Bulldogs. Eubanks picked off nine interceptions on the year and ran a couple of them back for scores to help lead Spyro to the Oklahoma Class 3A semifinals against Dulaga. This is Anthony Eubanks, a junior at Spyro. I said semifinals there with the quarterfinals against Dulaga in the Oklahoma yeah. State playoffs. We appreciate you joining us, Anthony. And uh, let's talk about the season. Uh, you're a junior with, with the Spyro Bulldogs. You guys go 10-3. and three. What was the highlight of this year for you? Well, I think it would be just making it to the quarterfinals. Playing, getting Southwest time players a week. And That's right. That's right. That was the highlight. Well, congratulations on that as well. Now, let's talk about you. You, run, you go both ways, like a lot of the players we talked about on the defensive squad. You run, uh, you're on offense as a receiver, and you're mm -hmm. on defense. Does playing on the offensive side of the ball help you out as a defensive back? Yeah, it does, kind of, because I can recognize some of the plays, and I can spy to them. Okay, now on offense, we were talking about this earlier. You had uh, 13 uh, touchdowns on offense, 12 interceptions on defense. And uh, you're coming back from your senior year. Let's, if they had to separate you, if they told, told, told you, if Coach Bunch told you, offense or defense, what would you say to him? Well, I'd probably pick offense because I like catching the ball and scoring. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more than sticking. Well, I, yeah. I, I, doubt, I doubt Coach Bunch is going to do that. You're too valuable on both sides of the ball. Again, congratulations uh, to you, Anthony, and, uh, for making our defensive player of the year. Well, uh, we're going to continue now on as we go on with uh, Neil Jones. And uh, Neil? Well, when you talk to coaches, they always bring up the importance not only of defense, they say defense wins championships, but they also talk a little bit about the importance of the kicking game. So here's our sports final, all sports final kicking specialists. Rick Still of Gentry. Now, Rick is best known for his quarterbacking, where he threw and ran for over 1,500 yards. But the senior also punted for over a 40-yard per kick average and was always a threat to throw or run out of punt formation. 
And the kick returner is also one of the area's top running backs, as Boonville's Randy May scored 18 touchdowns, four of them off kick returns. And the place kicker is Greg Gormley of Subiaco Academy. Greg's a two-time all-conference selection at kicker. He also punted for a 44 yards per kick average. Now for the Glamour Boys, the quarterbacks, receivers, and running backs to gain all that yardage and who grab all those headlines. Here's our sports final all-star attack. Our offense is led by quarterback Barry Lunny Jr. The two-time All-Stater took Southside to the Quad A State Championship while throwing for over 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns. Lunny was the conference back of the year and at 6 foot 3, 180 pounds, was considered by many to be the state's top high school recruit. In fact, he's already committed to the University of Arkansas. And he has a pair of talented receivers to throw to, including Johnny Mac Glass of Gentry. Glass hauled in 41 passes for 665 yards and seven touchdowns. And on the other side, there's Mark Cowett of Muldrow. Mark totaled 39 catches for 705 yards and 11 touchdowns. And folks, that was only in nine games. Cowett stands six feet and weighs 170 pounds. The offensive line is anchored by center Don Struby. The Springdale Jr. tips the scales at 247 pounds and stands 5 foot 11. He's considered by many to be this area's top underclassman. And he's joined by Charleston's Doug Lockridge, a 6 foot 2, 230 pounder who helped lead the Tigers' high powered offensive attack. And Doug was voted his conference's outstanding lineman award. Fayetteville's Ross Greenwood is also up front. The 260 pounder stands 6 foot 4, and he's earned a reputation for opening up gaping holes in the line. Ross was an all-conference selection. And Brian Keeney brought impressive credentials with him, having been named outstanding lineman in his league. The Farmington senior comes in at 6'3", 260. And the front wall is rounded out by Randy Russell of Southside. Russell earned rave reviews for the job he did in the Rebels championship game win over Springdale. And he's been called one of the best ever at Southside by his line coach, James Limley. And now for our trio of running backs, beginning with fullback Howard Simmons. The 175-pounder helped lead Van Buren into the Quad A state playoffs while running for 1,225 yards and 16 scores. Big number 30 ended his high school career with 2,900 yards and 32 touchdowns while averaging six yards per carry. That's quite a career. And he's joined by one of the biggest surprises of 1991, Tashayla Lewis of Spyro. Lewis was simply sensational, running for over 1,200 yards and 14 TDs in a part-time role. Now, Tashayla had the single biggest game of the year, piling up 320 yards on only 14 carries against Jufala, a game that earned him the Sooner State's Player of the Week honor. At 5'8", 155 pounds, Lewis is pure speed, and he deserves a spot amongst the area's most dangerous runners. And our all-sports final offense is rounded out by our offensive player of the year, tailback James Collier of Paris. And while others may have gotten more publicity, Collier did his talking on the playing field, where the 5'10", 185-pounder proved his worth by running for 1,755 yards and 22 touchdowns. And Collier also passed for two TDs on the halfback option play. And remember, James missed three contests with a knee injury. Named League Back of the Year, Collier also winds up his career as our Sports Final Offensive Player of the Year. And here he is, the Sports Final Offensive Player of the Year, James Collier's. Congratulations, James, on, the, on, on all that. Uh, what was the key to this season when you look back at it? Well, I'd say the team just finally came together and we played with a lot of emotion after the three losses and stuff, and we finally got together. And we should point out, those three losses, they came when you were on the sideline. You weren't playing. You had, a, I guess, a bung, bunged up knee a little bit. Well, you know, some of them, you know, they looked at me like more as they're later. And, you know, some of them just felt like they had to have me. But, you know, I told them they could play without me. You know, they did all right, though. We should have won. What did this year mean to you? Obviously, your senior year, we had a chance to talk back in September, and you said you had some goals. What did this mean to you to have the kind of year you did, you did have? Well, it meant a lot because I, I feel like I played a lot better this year than I did last year and got more yards and everything. And it kind of just made me feel better about myself and the team as well. You know, you, you did it kind of quietly. You're a big star in Paris. A lot of the folks up in northwest Arkansas don't get a chance to see Paris play very much. Is it nice to get some uh, recognition, not only for you, but for that great offensive unit you had in front of you? Yeah, it is great. And I always try to give them credit where it's deserved. So I appreciate them all. 
One last question. What are your future goals? What would you like to accomplish down the road? Well, maybe someday to play in the NFL if everything goes right for me. Is that possible? That's possible. <laughs> well, very good. Well, we appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thank Congratulations. You. A great, great season. Thank you. Well, Kerry, uh, that's our all-sports final team for 1991. Yeah. Now, we, we know we have the players, right. and they're great players. Mm -hmm. We still got to have a coach, right? That's right. There are several coaches in our area that led their teams to great seasons, but uh, we felt that head coach Barry Lenny Sr. should be our choice. In his third year at Fort Smith Southside, Lenny led the Rebs to a 13-1 record and a quad-A state championship running out of that, uh, that almost pro offense he runs. Really, when you look at them, there weren't too many offenses like no. Southside's around. Charleston had a great offensive attack, and some other people put up some great numbers but boy what Southside did you know we had a chance to talk with about 25 30 coaches in the last couple of mm -hmm. days finding players for this team and it kind of points out how many great coaches there are I mean Chris Bunch at Spiro yeah. turned out all those great players made it as far as the quarterfinals uh, Dennis DeBus took Shiloh Christian to the playoffs for the first time uh, Gerald Williams I mean there's got to be a bunch more you could think of Gary Autry comes to mind immediately the Van Buren pointers this team and uh, you talk with Gary remember we were talking that they were moving up to the 4A when you first talked to him about it he was like hey you know we can do it we've got the players Gary, uh, Gary takes control of those Van Buren pointers, and they are, they are one of the hardest working teams in this area. They go to the Quad A West, and they make the playoffs in their first season. And don't forget the job Gerald Williams did up at Springdale, Mike Adams at Charleston. Jeez, All just so many good coaches around. <laughs> there sure is. Well, that'll do it for this Sunday night edition of Sports Final. Thank you for staying up with us. For Blair Cartwright and Editor Terry Lovell, I'm Kerry Toby. And this is Neil Jones. Now, as we go tonight, we're going to leave you with another look at the All Sports Final team, including the guys who made honorable mention. Good night from the Sports Center. See you next week. Thank you.